Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So, after family and travel, we talked about last week, gifts are a pretty important part of the holiday, right? What would Christmas be without gifts? Well, maybe as you get a little older, it is easier to celebrate without your own gifts, but what about the gifts for your loved ones, especially the children? It's not just our celebrations and the time that we spend shopping and wrapping and hiding and how much of the news and, and just all of our time is filled this time of year with how much do we spend on gifts and what are we going to buy and what's our budget and what's appropriate and what do we give to whoever. Ads on TV, radio, newspapers, magazines, the web pages that seem to stalk you and they all have that something that somebody wants. Even our books and movies are filled with gifts this time of year. There was that, that Christmas story with the boy who wanted that, that one special thing for Christmas. Do you remember that one? Remember his name, Ralphie? He would do almost anything for that one gift, the Red Rider BB gun. Even Santa told him, you'll shoot your eye out. Well, I had, I had my own for a short time. I was pretty young when I got it. It was actually my dad's, a hand-me-down, so it was well used before I got it even. I don't remember if it was a Christmas gift. I'm pretty sure it wasn't, because my only memories of the, of the gun are actually the, the deer season that I carried it around so that I would I'd feel older. <laughs> Like I would do anything with a gun during deer season, a BB gun. Um, and then I remember the day I lost it. I was out in the woods playing and I set it down to go inside for lunch and a nap. And I never found it again. I was less than 200 feet from grandma's house. I remember almost, almost exactly where I was. We even went out with a metal detector later. Well, quite a bit later. But we never found that gun. Maybe it'll turn up someday. I guess I was too young for that gift. Too young to appreciate it. Too young to take care of it. Neither my brother nor I ever got a BB gun again. But Dad did have a pellet gun, and when I was a little older, I was allowed to use that. So one day, my dad and my brother and I were all walking together in the field, and I was carrying the pellet gun, doing a little hunting, and I was walking a safe distance away from my brother and my dad, and I couldn't remember which way the safety mechanism worked and if I had the gun on safety or not. And it wasn't labeled, it was, a, it was an old gun, so not labeled. And so to test the safety, I pulled the trigger without aiming the gun. And it hit my brother in the forehead just above his eye. I lost that gun. For a while. I almost shot my brother's eye out. And then my dad almost shot me. But, uh, well, he took the gun away. I didn't lose it in the woods that time. And he made me read through the hunter's safety manual. And I learned a lot about respecting and caring for firearms. Probably more from the experience than from the book. I was really scared for my brother about what I had almost done. I guess I, maybe I was still a bit young for that gift too. But 
my dad still has that pellet gun and he's sharing it with the grandkids and my brother still has his eye so no permanent damage not too bad in the long run and I learned a valuable lesson or maybe you can think of your own gifts that you were not quite ready for or maybe it's easier to think of gifts that you have given as a parent or grandparent to your children and who were not quite ready or not quite as appreciative as you had hoped. Gifts that were misused, broken, abandoned too soon. You know, I mean, it's not just gifts, but uh, that feeling you get when you come home and you find your spouse drinking coffee out of your best china cup while it's sitting on the engine block of the car and he's using your grandma's silverware to change the oil. Or that, that feeling you get when you come home and you find your spouse using your cordless drill as a hammer. <laughs> Great for the battery, right? And your hunting knife is sticking in the ground next to a fresh pile of rocks. Hmm. You know that feeling. Teenagers and cars. It's always easier to see others' sins, but we all have gifts. We're too young for, didn't fully appreciate, didn't take care of. We have an even greater gift. As great as you may think a gun or a cordless drill or fine china is, you can't take any of those things with you. You won't need them either. You have eternal life with God in paradise, <laughs> the ultimate cruise trip. Through the little baby whose birth we are preparing to celebrate, God's own son was the greatest Christmas gift ever. And how did the world receive him? Herod tried to kill him while he was still an infant. Most of the people ignored him or did their best to try. The chief priests and the scholars went through an elaborate scheme to have him killed. Suffered for our sin too. So we aren't guiltless even though we're several thousand years away from the actual event. We wouldn't have done any better ourselves. The human race wasn't ready for God's gift. But the Father knew that it would never be ready by its own efforts. And the most interesting part of this gift is that the actual benefit of it involved the killing and mistreating of Jesus. Without his death, there would be no resurrection and no new life for us. But you have to wonder, how did Jesus and the Father feel about this whole thing? Well, they have shared with us through the prophets and the Psalms that it does hurt. They are hurt by our lack of appreciation and still hurt when we continue to sin and are slow to repent. At least we can't break this gift. We can never lose our forgiveness. But out of respect for the pricelessness of this gift, the your unimaginable cost and value, God has called us to repent of our sins and ask for his help to straighten things out, to prepare ourselves for when he comes again. So we will be comforted with the knowledge that our sins are washed away. Living with no regrets, dying with no regrets, doesn't mean that we pretend we aren't sinning. It's even better when we admit our sins and ask for God's forgiveness and with the help of the Holy Spirit, strive to live more in the way that he wants us to. 
And then we won't be caught by surprise when he appears in the clouds. We won't be unprepared, wondering if we're really fully forgiven. Through repentance and confession and absolution, we can truly know the comfort, comfort that Isaiah writes about. The comfort that God wants for us to experience now and even more fully in the new creation. So don't wait for the new year. We're already in the new church year, so take stock of your, your new year's resolutions. Examine your life, especially according to God's commandments. Repent and set new resolutions now. Ask for God's help to appreciate his greatest gift that you have received in this baby that we are about to celebrate. God himself, born of a virgin, sleeping in a manger. <laughs> what an awesome gift. How incredible and yet so easy to mistake and under underappreciate. It's just the baby. And yet through this infant, God is giving us comfort and joy. Comfort that you can't lose, break or destroy, no matter how hard you try. It is yours to cherish forever. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.